everybody. Welcome to TCM Talk. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Kirsten Cowan, licensed acupuncturist and herbalist and a creator of the company Angelica and Peony. And with me as always is my colleague Denise Chicuto, who's just tweeting out our scope to all her followers. There we go. Inviting them to join us today. We're going to be talking all about sex all month long on TCM Talk. Um, and we're pretty excited about it. We've got lots to share. Um, I'm just going to fidget with this a little bit. Bear with me, folks. So somehow we managed to... Batman make... camera angles and everything. I know, I know. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I can see our faces a little bit while we chat. Um, so yeah, so this is the first of four scopes that we're going to do this month. We're going to do two today and then two in two weeks, um, talk, talking all about um, sexual health, um, sexual um, life, mm -hmm. and um, and what Chinese medicine has to say and what it can offer folks to have a more fulfilling, healthy, and satisfying sex life. Yes, and we'll say now, if you want to get the links to show, uh, for people watching on the replay, or if you want to watch the replay, here are the links. bit.ly slash periscope pins is uh, where you can find all the stuff we, uh, articles we pin about this and about this topic. And bit.ly slash TCM talk vids is the link for all the videos that we'll be posting um, for a talk show. Yeah, all the archives of everything that we've done and everything that we're going to do going forward. Yeah, now we're on YouTube. Yes, we moved to YouTube. We, we made the move. <laughs> um, if folks have questions during the broadcast, please go ahead and just comment with them. Um, and if you have questions after or you're watching on the replay, you can always message us through social media or email us uh, traditional Chinese medicine talk at gmail.com. Great. So what do we want to talk about first a little bit, Denise? We're going to start, start talking about communication, which is uh -huh. essential for sex in general. But we want to talk about communication, um, you know, communicate with yourself. Number one, communicate with your partner or partners, um, depending on your sexual life and um, also how to communicate with your healthcare practitioners about sex um, because anything you say to your healthcare practitioners should be confidential so you should be able to have a relationship with them where you feel comfortable to talk about sex. Yeah, absolutely. Not everybody knows, certainly, what, you know, as far as um, acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine is concerned, not everybody knows um, how much um, acupuncture and herbal medicine and, and so on um, can offer um, assistance for all kinds of problems that folks have um, with uh, having a satisfying sexual life, both physical problems, emotional problems. Um, Chinese medicine has a lot to offer, so um, being able to talk comfortably and honestly about your sexual life with your acupuncturist is really important. And on our um, Periscope board, we've got some links up to um, resource guides with all kinds of um, uh, friendly practitioners, um, both in Chinese medicine and in other modalities, so that um, folks can easily find providers who are going to be LGBTQ friendly, trans friendly, body positive, um, kink and polyamory friendly and open and accepting professionals so that um, folks with, you know, every imaginable type of, um, you know, every, every, uh, you know, from every background and with um, all different kinds of sexual lives can really find a practitioner who can help them, who will feel comfortable and who they can be um, honest and open with. Absolutely. Yeah. So check out our board for that. Um, so we also want to talk about that in as far as Chinese medicine is concerned, it's about balance. Now you may have heard of yin and yang before, and um, sometimes that gets dumbed down to yin is is female and yang is male. But we're not gonna. We don't believe in that as being very as simple as that. Um, especially because if you read about in Chinese medicine, the texts, if you, if you know what a Tai Chi symbol looks like, which is the yin and yang symbol, mm -hmm. um, you know that there's, the simplest part of that is that there's a white side with a tiny circle of black in it, and there's a black side with a tiny circle of white in it. And that really means that there's a little bit of yin within the yang, and there's a little bit of yang within the yin. And they're constantly changing, and they're constantly flowing towards each other. Mm -hmm. You know, yin becomes yang, and yang becomes yin. And so, you know, that's a perfect metaphor for, um, for talking about 
different kinds of sexuality, different kinds of sexual orientation, different genders. You know, in Chinese medicine terms, it really makes sense. For example, trans people are, are totally, they're totally on the Chinese medicine perspective uh, spectrum. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not about black or white. It's not about just being male or just being female. Um, it's a continuum. And uh, any Chinese medicine practitioner should know that based on Chinese medicine theory and be able to relate to whoever comes through their door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of behavior, you know, the um, so yin and yang is, you know, is a constantly moving, constantly self-adjusting um, kind of notion. As Denise said, it's they're always in movement. They're always moving towards each other. And that's also true about our behavior. So, um, you know, in terms of... Um, uh, in terms of our sexual likes and dislikes, mm -hmm. the amount of libido that we have, um, kind of whether we're more exploratory or more um, content, those things change through life, through our ages and stages, through seasons, mm -hmm. um, and that is something that is, um, you know, is, is part of a, of a balanced life in Chinese medicine. Um, so there is no one size fits all prescription in terms of how much sex you should be having or what type of sex you should be having or who you should be having it with. Um, the spectrum of how we understand balance in traditional Chinese medicine is really a big tent and can, um, you know, can, um, can um, see you in a place of health um, that can be really different for different people or different people at different times of their lives. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just remember that no, uh, no one size does not fit all or one one way doesn't fit everybody and um, we also want to tell people to be cautious of extremes um, sometimes your healthcare practitioner might tell you to not do this or not do that um, in some of the traditional Chinese medicine texts it's kind of funny actually there's actually pres it's not prescriptions necessarily but it's there there um, warnings to not have sex in graveyards, not have sex in temples. Uh, you know, your, your acupuncturist may tell you, you know, don't have sex when it's cold outside if you tend to be really cold because that might affect you, for example. It might, it might affect um, because your constitution runs really cold. Um, and to, to know that it's not a moral judgment. So mm -hmm. when your acupuncturist tells you things, gives you suggestions about lifestyle, it's just um, based on your constitution and um, what they find out about you. So um, if you, you know, but if you prefer to have sex in polar climates. Or graveyards. Or graveyards. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to judge you as long as you're not harming anybody else. <laughs> right. Or yourself, you know. Go have sex on the top of a snowy mountain. Hey, that's great. But you, you might know. catch a cold and have to come back to your acupuncturist. <laughs> For some more help. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, you know, in for, you know, in Western culture, um, there is so much, so we live in a very sex negative um, society, a very sex negative culture. Um, we're in America um, and this is shared, you know, by a lot of Western cultures and other, you know, places around the world. And, you know, everything that we're going to talk about this month and our perspective as healers and as practitioners of traditional Chinese medicine is that a recommendation about health is not a moral recommendation, as Denise said. Mm -hmm. So if you have sex on a snowy mountaintop, um, it doesn't make you a bad person, <laughs> but it may make you a person who catches a cold. Right, <laughs> right exactly. So um, another question about, you know, acupuncture and sex is, uh, can your acupuncturist help you have better sex? I don't know, Denise, can they? <laughs> yes. Yay! <laughs> this doesn't mean that your acupuncturist has to be there when you're having sex with your partner. Let's say no. No. <laughs> boundaries. Good boundaries in Ch traditional Chinese medicine, of course. Um, but whether it's a physical or emotional issue, you know, talk to your acupuncturist. And, you know, if it has to do with, let's throw out some some reasons we'll talk about more about in the next scope. But if it's erectile dysfunction, vaginal dryness... Uh, you know, high libido, low libido, um, things like that, or if it has to do with more emotional stuff, which they all do. In Chinese medicine, everything is linked. You know, you're familiar with the idea of body, mind, and spirit, and acupuncture is definitely that kind of medicine. 
So your acupuncturist is going to look at all those all those things together to find out what's going on with you and what's the cause and how traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, Chinese herbs, um, essential oils, um, whatever modalities that they use within Chinese medicine can help you have better sex. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that just brings us back to you know why it's so important that you feel comfortable with your practitioner. Um, and that you're with someone who's going to be um, accepting and understanding of you, no matter what you bring to the table, um, so that you can get the help um, that you need if you need it. Right. And if your acupuncturist thinks that, you know, another professional might be able to help you better, um, hopefully they'll have resources to let you know, um, you know, whether it's a, it's, a, it's a coach, you know, some kind of a, a sexuality uh, teacher, a sex, a sex coach, um, you know, from, or sex sur sexual surrogates, or you know, it's something you need to go see your Western medical doctor about. Hopefully, they will have a list of resources or suggest that you find somebody. Yeah, and we have some of those. Um, we have some of those um, resources on our Periscope um, Pinterest board um, as well. <laughs> there it is. Um, so if um, you know, if you want to look at what some of those different types of options and different types of practitioners are, um, you can see that there. Great. All right. I think we're done with the This was the scope. philosophy talk <laughs> portion. <laughs> the next one, we'll have more details. Um, we'll be back in just a minute um, talking about um, how does Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese medicine see um, sex and, and sexual um, issues, especially dysfunctions, and um, what are the types of things that we can help with. We'll be back in just a minute. Thanks.